Good afternoon, Mets fans, and welcome to a Wednesday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and uh, I'm going to talk about last night's game, which the Mets won, uh, thanks in no small part to the guy who I want to talk most about today, that would be Jeff McNeil. Uh, but I also want to talk a little bit about Steven Matz, who I was very critical of last night, and I feel bad about it. So I want to talk about that today. First and foremost, I want to mention the fact that I'm not wearing a Mets shirt today, and that's simply because I had to get a new passport photo taken, and uh, I wanted to look moderately... Um, business casual in said photo so thought that having a uh, Mets jersey on in the passport photo would be uh, less than professional so uh, in any event um, last night the Mets defeated the San Francisco Giants by a score of six to two behind a pretty good pitching performance from Steven Matz uh, although um, five minutes into the game I certainly wasn't feeling like that was going to be the case um, also um, Part of, uh, part of that last night's performance was a pat on the back to Jeff McNeil, who I think has recorded his fourth or fifth multi-hit game since being up with the Mets. Um, Jeff McNeil has been a, a really nice addition to this team, and I'm trying not to get overly excited about it because we have a, a tendency as Mets fans to um, overhype someone who's had a good two weeks, but um, that aside, Jeff McNeil looks like a legit everyday hitter. And as I talked about uh, earlier this week or perhaps late last week, his defense has been more than accurate, uh, more than uh, adequate at second base. So all of these concerns that we've heard about Jeff McNeil and about, boy, he might not have a position, um, it, it sounds an awful lot like Daniel Murphy to me. And I think the big difference between McNeil and Murphy is that McNeil is already showing that he's going to be a decent defender, which despite my, myself being a huge Murphy fan, I was never uh, a, a big um, Murph's good on defense guy. <laughs> um, I sort of always was an apologist for that and sort of said, you know, Murph's bat makes up for his lack of, of range and his lack of defense. And that was certainly true. But how nice will it be if Jeff McNeil turns out to be a guy who can be relied upon every day to play second base, to play adequate defense, and to provide the kind of contact hitting this Mets team has been desperately lacking since Daniel Murphy left after the 2015 season? That would be an absolute godsend going into 2019 and looking at what the next few years are going to look like looking at trying to fill holes without looking to find a guy who can do the things right now that it looks like McNeil can do with the bat I'm talking about. So um, it was McNeil who put the Mets in front uh, for good last night with a big clutch single to drive in what was at the time the go-ahead run. Uh, of course, uh, a couple batters later, um, Michael Conforto hit a home run to put the game out of reach. But um, before Conforto's home run, McNeil was the guy who deserved the kudos, and I'm happy to give them to him. Before McNeil, however, gets the kudos, I have to take back my negative comments about Steven Matz that I made last night. I was, um, I was very negative um, after Matz walked the leadoff batter and um, subsequently gave up a two-run home run. And it turned out those were the only real blemishes on Matz's night. Um, he was he was uh, he was pretty good last night. He pitched five innings, um, threw the most pitches he, he's thrown in a little bit over a month. Uh, that was because of his time on the disabled list. Um, but I was really critical, and I have been really critical of Matz. And I had a good exchange on Twitter last night with um, with a couple of folks uh, talking about Matz and how pissed off I was about, you know, the, the first five minutes of the game. And we had a good, a good exchange about, you know, why we're so critical about Mats. And for me, it always comes back to the same thing that I always keep saying about him, which is like, if you just look at the pure stuff from Steven Mats, considering that he's a left-handed starting pitcher, 
He has as much upside as anybody on this Mets staff, but he's yet to, to really harness all of that. He's, he's good in stretches, um, you know, the ups and downs, like I talked about yesterday. And when the game started, it looked like, oh, man, another down, you know. But the reality of it is, is it was maybe the start of another up. Uh, he had a, a other, again, other than that first inning blip, uh, Matt's pitched a pretty good game. And I have to take back my negative criticisms of him um, following that uh, the first two batters. Um, I'm talking about Matt's as, you know, this has been a guy that we can't rely on. And I, the more I keep talking about him that way, the more I realize that, boy, this sounds an awful lot, an awful lot like the way I used to talk about Zach Wheeler. And uh, now I'm talking about Zach Wheeler as an absolute stabilizing guy in the rotation that we can count on every fifth day. And uh, by all accounts, Matt's was a late bloomer. I mean, Matt's is uh, Matt's not Matt's Wheeler rather. Um, was a late bloomer. He he came, has really come into his own this season. You know, after I mean, the Mets traded for him in in 2012, and it took him six seasons to become the pitcher that the Mets hoped he would be. Stephen Matz debuted with the Mets in 2015. He made his big league debut debut in 2015, and a lot like Zach Wheeler, his first couple of seasons have been sprinkled with some promise, some. Uh, some not so great stuff uh, and uh, a lot of injuries and you know maybe the injuries are the reason that Steven Matz has never been able to really harness his abilities and perhaps and I've said this on Twitter last night perhaps it, Wheeler will Wheeler uh, perhaps Matz will be a late bloomer like like Zach Wheeler uh, has turned out to be and again how good would that be if in a year or so Steven Matz is able to collect himself, become the pitcher that we all think he can be, and uh, really become that fourth reliable starting pitcher. Uh, a lot of what's happening with Matz might also tie into something that Mickey Calloway has said about Jason Vargas this year. And he was sort of saying, you know, Vargas hasn't been able to get into a groove because he's missed so, missed so much time uh, with injury and all the other things that have plagued him this year. Uh, some of it was uh, it was Vargas's own fault, and you know you can sort of say the same about Matz. Maybe Matz is not able to get into a groove as a as a pitcher because he just doesn't have the consistency in terms of being out there every fifth day and being asked to throw, um, you, you know, six innings, seven innings per start, and, and being able to give you six innings and seven innings per start. And maybe it's that that he just hasn't found that groove for whatever reason, and once he's able to find it and get into it and pitch every fifth day, maybe he'll turn into what Zach Wheeler is looking like right now. Am I uh, pipe dreaming on this? Probably. <laughs> uh, am I being overly optimistic? Most likely. But, boy, it's a, good, it's a good thing to think about. It's a good thing to think about these guys being the pitchers that we all thought they could be. Speaking of pitchers who we all thought they could be, um, the guy that I'm really concerned about is pitching tonight. It is Noah Syndergaard. Um, I I want to see Noah Syndergaard get back to being the dominant Noah Syndergaard that he was um, in 2016. He has not been dominant this year at all. I've, I've said it before. I think he's. I've used the word pedestrian uh, to describe Syndergaard, and I I think Noah Syndergaard has become um, hittable. I think he's become uh, a guy who doesn't have the movement on his fastball that he's had uh, throughout most of his career, and I think he's suffered as a result of that. And the bottom line with all of this, to me, is that if Syndergaard can't figure this out, maybe he needs to go on a DL. Maybe there's something wrong with him physically that's preventing him to, for, from being the pitcher that we that we know he can be, uh, that we've seen him be. So I'm, in, I'm interested in seeing uh, what Noah can do tonight. Uh, hopefully the Giants and the, the weak-hitting Giants um, will, will give Noah some uh, additional confidence, which, you know, he doesn't lack. Uh, but maybe being able to throw to these guys who aren't, uh, aren't sluggers and aren't going to be a major threat to uh, hit the long ball, maybe that'll be helpful for Noah. But I'll be looking forward to seeing that tonight. Uh, speaking of tonight, I will be uh, watching the game, and I will be talking about it tomorrow on my next video. So for now, I appreciate your watching this video. 
Uh, follow me on Twitter, Twitter if you're not already doing so, at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets. <laughs>